Coming in at number 10, we have Electrode Prime. Now, uh, once again, this is actually a card that was used in competitive play quite a bit. Electrode Prime certainly was a good card. However, it was also very risky, and I can't tell you how many times I heard people say, I used Electrode, and I whiffed completely, so I lost. Electrode's energy might, when you use it, you blow yourself up in Electrode fashion, which means you knock yourself out, you give your opponent a prize. That's negative number one of Electrode. Uh, and then you look at the top seven cards of your deck, you take any energy cards there, and you attach them to your Pokemon. But then you discard the rest of them. So what would happen to a lot of players is they would confidently use Energy Might. They would say, oh, I only need one energy to use my attack this turn. And then they look at their top seven cards, and they would go one by one. they say, no, 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 no. All right, the seventh one's got to be an energy. No. So... Basically what you would do is you would spend your resources getting a stage 1 Pokemon into play. You would use the power, knock yourself out, giving your opponent a prize, and then discard 7 cards from your deck. That's not very good. On the bright side, you could actually get a bunch of energy with Energy Might, which is why it has some positive effects. You could power up a bunch of Pokemon in one turn if you're fortunate enough to have energy in your top seven cards. So, high risk, high reward for Electrode. You could either power up all your Pokemon, or discard a bunch of useful cards. The worst part about Electrode is that, even if you did get a couple energy off of Energy Might, a lot of the time it would just end up discarding too many resources anyway. Say you get two energy off the top seven, which is pretty normal, uh, I guess... Three or more would be pretty unusual, but two energy is pretty good off of Energy Might. You still have to discard five cards, which you can end up discarding a bunch of important resources and just lose because you discarded them with Energy Might. So Electrode, I mean, you you know pretty much Electrode's always going to be risky. A Pokemon that blows itself up for a living, that's going to be risky. At number 9, we have Tickling Machine from the Team Rocket set. Now, in the previous cards, we've had some Rocket Secret Machines. This one is actually Rocket Secret Robot. I don't know where Team Rocket gets all this money, but they keep putting it into weird things like this. And if you just look at the picture, you can see a Mr. Mime in the corner covering his mouth going, I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know if that's going to work so well. So, Tickling Machine, when you play it, you flip a coin. If it's heads, you actually make your opponent set aside their entire hand. That's actually pretty good. They don't get any access to it the entire next turn. This was actually used in some decks that would try to deck out your opponent. You would play this Tickling Machine, and then combine it with stuff like Imposter Professor Oak, forcing your opponent to draw seven more cards. They couldn't shuffle in their hand because it was set aside. They couldn't touch it. And then you would use Moltres from the fossil set to use wildfire and discard cards from your opponent's deck. So this was actually used in a competitive deck. Well, somewhat competitive. But um, like the other rocket secret machine we had earlier, the thought wave machine, when you play this one and you get tails, your turn's over. So on heads, okay, you you make them put their hand aside, that's pretty cool. Your turn continues as normal. But if you get Tails, your turn just ends. <laughs> uh, there's probably nothing worse than just having your turn end when you still wanted to do other stuff. So, of course, we have the completely redundant you can't attack this turn in parentheses when it says your turn ends immediately. Uh, old cards are known for having just too much, too much text for no reason. And this one is no exception where it says your turn ends immediately. And then in parentheses, you can't attack this turn. So it's just letting you know, are you sure you want to do this? If you get Tails, your turn ends, and that means you can't attack. And that Mr. Mime is going to continue to give you a dirty look. So Tickling Machine comes in at number 9. It might make you laugh, or it might make you cry.
Number eight is Blaine's Moltres. Now, when you look at the card, you might think, wow, that's a lot of energy symbols. And it is. There's actually five fire required to use this attack. And they actually had to take up three lines of the whole card just to use it. Um, it's got two on the top. It, it makes a cool X, I guess. Um, but anytime you see that, you just kind of know this Pokemon takes way too much energy to attack. And it better do something cool if it takes that much energy. So let's take a look at the attack. For 5 energy it does 90 damage, which at the time, that was actually pretty good. Not much stuff did 90 damage. Okay, that's cool. But, there's some text there. You have to flip a coin. If it's tails, you have to shuffle Blaine's Moltres back into your deck. With all 5 energy. So you would spend five turns powering up this awesome Moltres. You finally got it going. You're probably losing by now because you spent five turns powering this thing up. And then you send him out to attack. Phoenix Flame. You think to yourself, man, that sounded pretty cool. Look at all the energy on this Moltres. And then you flip a coin and it's tails. And your opponent kind of chuckles as you shuffle this back into your deck. So, 50% of the time... You have to shuffle this thing back into your deck after you spent five turns powering it up. So, Blaine's Moltres, I don't know why you'd ever play this card. It's just setting yourself up for failure, pretty much. But I suppose if you ever managed to win a game with Blaine's Moltres, you would be able to talk trash to your opponent for the rest of your life. So, Blaine's Moltres coming in at number eight. We're getting up there with some really risky cards now. Blaine is back at number 7, this time in a trainer form, with Blaine's Gamble. Now anytime you see the word gamble in a card, you know it's gonna have some sort of risk involved. This one, yeah, you guessed it, it's got a high level of risk involved. So, what happens when you play Blaine's Gamble is, you discard some cards from your hand, as many as you want, and then you flip a coin, if it's heads, you draw double the cards that you discarded. So that's pretty cool. You know, if you discarded like three cards and you flipped heads, you would draw six. That's a lot of cards to draw. But if you got tails, you just discarded your cards for no reason. And you left yourself wondering, why in the world did I play Blaine's Gamble? So on heads, it could be pretty good. On tails, you just discarded a bunch of cards and gained nothing for it. So Blaine's Gamble... It's a silly gamble. It's almost like playing slots at a casino. You know it's probably not going to end well. But you do it because, hey, you could win big. At number 6, we have Entei from the Neo Revelation set. Now, Entei was actually used quite often in an Entei McCargo deck. Back in the old days, from the, the STS era, you had Entei with McCargo... Also from Neo Revelation. It was a nice fire deck. But Entei was extremely risky in itself. When you play it down, you look at the top five cards of your deck. If there's any fire energy there, you attach them to your Pokemon. And uh, you discarded the rest of the cards. So right there, there's a huge element of risk. If you whiffed fire energy, you would have to just discard all five cards. And that's bad in itself. Also, this only worked when you put Entei down from your hand, so that's another drawback to it. You can only do it the first time you put down Entei. So let's say, you know, you got a couple fire energy. You probably still have to discard some cards. Best case scenario, you get some fire energy and uh, your turn still ends. Yes, using Howl ends your turn completely. <laughs> so, Entei, um, I mean... It's always going to end your turn, so whenever you use it, you're never going to be able to attack. And you could also still discard cards from your deck. So as we discussed with Electrode earlier, randomly discarding cards from your deck is probably not a good idea. Especially when it ends your turn. <laughs> so, um, Entei, you have to be prepared to say, okay, I want to discard cards from my deck, and I'm just not going to do anything this turn. Hopefully it works out well for you, because you only get to do it once. 
And uh, if Howl whiffs your energy completely, and you get zero energy off your top five cards, you're probably going to have to spend another turn putting down another Entei and using Howl again, and hoping for the best again. So Entei, even though it was featured in the very powerful Entei Macargo deck way back when, is kind of a silly card when you think about it. It's always going to end your turn. It's pretty much always going to discard resources from your deck. And you can only use it once. So, Entei, maybe not the riskiest card in the world, but it's up there. Alright folks, we're in the top 5 of the riskiest cards of all time list. So I hope you're ready to see some really wacky stuff from here on out. Now at number 5 we have Kyogre, a card from Call of Legends that I don't know why exists. Uh, let's just take a look at it right off the bat. It takes 4 water energy. That's never a good thing. Whenever something takes 4 colored energy, it's going to be extremely difficult to power up. And uh, usually, I mean, these big attacks that take a lot of energy, unfortunately, don't end up being very good. And this is the case with Kyogre. Um, if you take a look at it, Destructive Tsunami, you flip a coin of heads, you do 40 to your opponent's entire field. So that's actually really good. If you can do 40 to absolutely everything on your opponent's field, that's pretty strong. Uh, that, that'll actually go a long way. 40 damage is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, if you hit heads a couple times on this, you're going to knock out a bunch of Pokemon. But, um, as with all these other cards on this list, there is a drawback. If you flip tails, you, you do 40 to all of your Pokemon. So you would spend 4 energy powering up this Pokemon, and then you go for the attack. And then you just do 40 damage to your own Pokemon. So this is bad, obviously, for a lot of reasons. You never want to hurt yourself. Even hurting the active would be bad. But you do 40 to every single one of your Pokemon. Which means you have just softened up every single one of your Pokemon for your opponent. And you just wasted your attack doing so. So on heads, alright, great, you did 40 to everything. Took you 4 energy, not bad. Um... Forty dollar stuff, that's passable. Tails, you just pretty much lost the game. Um, I actually played games with this deck for fun with Kyogre, and um, what would happen is you need to flip heads two or three times to really do anything. Then you would start knocking a bunch of stuff out. But if you flipped one tails, your opponent pretty much would knock out everything in your deck in one hit the rest of the game. So if you're feeling really lucky. This could be the card for you. The downside, of course, is it has 100 hit points. And in today's game, that's not a whole lot. So you're going to spend 4 energy, and he's probably going to get 1 attack off. And then he's going to get knocked out. Especially if you flip Tails. Then you're going to get knocked out for sure. So, Kyogre. Destructive Tsunami. It's going to destroy somebody. Just hope it's not you. Coming in at number 4, we have Team Rocket's Meowth. Now this little guy only has 40 hit points, but he packs a wallop for 1 energy. He uses Miraculous Comeback, which is a pretty good name for the attack because it's going to take a miracle for you to survive it. For each Pokemon in play, you flip a coin, which means yours and your opponent. And for each heads, you do 10 damage. For each tails, though, you do 10 to yourself. And like I said, 40 hit points. So let's say there's like 10 Pokemon in play, not too unusual, 5 for yourself, 5 for your opponent, and you use Miraculous Comeback, odds are you're going to flip 4 tails, or maybe even more, and you're just going to knock yourself out with your own attack. So Meowth, it could damage your opponent, it could do a good chunk of damage, don't get me wrong, but he's going to knock himself out pretty much every time. And when your own attack knocks you out, I can't think of any game in existence where killing your own stuff is actually a good thing when it takes up your whole turn. I mean, you knock yourself out, you have to promote a new Pokemon, and your turn ends, your opponent takes a prize, and they get a free shot at your new Pokemon. That's pretty messed up. Um, now, you could flip like 10 heads in a row, 
and knock out something. Odds aren't very good of that, but it could happen. Team Rocket's Meowth was actually used in the two-on-two -two format, where you would have two players, teams of two, they would face off against each other, and one player would play Team Rocket's Meowth, and if they saw on the first turn of the game, oh, that guy's got only one Pokemon, they would fill up their whole bench, and then try to target that guy down. And with that many Pokemon in play, you would probably knock that person out of the game. So Team Rocket's Meowth did have a use. I mean, of course, he would knock himself out, but it would be at the cost of knocking one of your opponents out of the game. So Team Rocket's Meowth did have a use. His risk was put to good use at times. But overall, ugh, if you're going to play this, be prepared to knock yourself out. Coming in at number three is Minion of Team Rocket. Now, it should not be any surprise to you that a Team Rocket card makes it all the way up this high on the list because Team Rocket isn't very bright. But let's take a look at what goes into making Minion of Team Rocket particularly risky. The effect of it is actually pretty unique and actually kind of cool. If you flip two heads, you take one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and you return it to their hand, which means if they had any energy attached to it and they were building it up, they have to return everything back to their hand. Or if it was an evolution, and they spent all that time getting a stage 2 into play, they would have to return it into their hand. This could be pretty cool. If your opponent spent all this time powering up a huge Pokemon, powering up their Charizard, you could just send it back to their hand. But what happens when you flip tails, you might ask? Well, this isn't one of those, well, if you flip one tails, you know, nothing happens. Or, uh, you know, if you flip both tails, you know, then it doesn't work. And there's a, this side effect. No, this is if you flip one or two tails, your turn ends immediately. And you can't do anything else. So, um, 25% of the time, cool, you get to return a, a bench Pokemon back to your opponent's hand. That's actually pretty neat. 75% of the time, your turn is over. So 75% of the time, that's 3 out of 4 times that you play this card. You're just going to play it, you're going to flip at least one Tails, and you're going to say, huh, okay, go. Which is never good. The reason why it's so bad is because this card would only be good at points in the game where your opponent has set up, and so have you. So this is going to be later on into the game where you're gonna wanna be attacking. If you're not attacking, you're probably gonna be losing. But this is the only time that Manion of Team Rocket's gonna be useful. So you would play it on a turn where you wanted to attack. But you know, you just can't attack when your turn ends. So Minion of Team Rocket, not a very bright one. It's probably one of those that you face in the caves. He's probably got like three Zubats and a coughing. Um, you know, they're at like level 35. He never bothered to evolve them for some reason. He's just kind of there to annoy you and get in the way. Um, it's probably one of those guys from Team Rocket. So, number three, Minion of Team Rocket. Thankfully, we're all done with Team Rocket cards now. Okay, at number two on the riskiest cards of all time, we have the appropriately named Gambler. Okay, so Gambler, you flip a coin. If heads, you shuffle in your hand and you draw eight cards. Wow, that's a lot of cards to draw. So uh, you can see there's a really high reward if you flip heads for this thing. What happens if you flip tails? Well, let's see. If tails draw, oh, one card. <laughs> um, uh-oh. So Gambler, that's exactly what it is. You pretty much put the whole game on the line when you play this card. You say, alright, Gambler. If I flip heads, I'm going to draw eight cards. I'm going to draw everything I could ever want. If I flip tails, I lose my whole hand and I only draw one card. So, um, unless that card's another Gambler, then you're only going to have one card. Which means you're probably just going to end up losing the game because you have no cards in your hand. So, Gambler... There's no way a card like this can be named Gambler. 
and not have an extreme amount of risk involved with it. But, yeah, Gambler is number two on the list. The only thing mind-boggling should be, wait, there's a card riskier than Gambler? And the answer is yes. And that's coming up next. So before we get to the number one card on the list, let's just do a recap of numbers 20 through 2. 20 was Zapdos from the Game Boy. 19 was Pokemon Personality Test and Blaine's Quiz number 3. Number 18 was Thought Wave Machine. 17, Super Energy Removal 2. Then we had Deli Bird at 16. Tyranitar and Rampardos GL coming in at number 15. 14 was Dark Primeape. Digger comes in at 13. Misty's Gyarados at number 12. 11 was Team Galactic's Wager. Number 10 is Electrode Prime. Number 9, Tickling Machine. 8 is Blaine's Moltres. Followed by Blaine's Gamble at number 7. Entei comes in at number 6. Number 5 is Kyogre from Call of Legends. Number 4, Team Rocket's Meowth. That's right. Number 3 is Minion of Team Rocket. And of course, number 2 was Gambler. So, here we are. What is the number one riskiest card of all time? Well, let me just say, it kind of makes sense. Throughout this list, we have seen nothing but Team Rocket and Team Rocket Inventions and all of their Pokemon. So it only makes sense for number one to be one of the leader's Pokemon, Giovanni's Machoke. So of course Giovanni is the leader of Team Rocket, and of course he has the riskiest Pokemon card of all. For one energy, risky attack. Alright, just take a look at it. You know, it eh, 60 damage for one, that's a ton of damage. Especially during that time, I mean, 60 for one, that's unheard of. Not much stuff did 60, period. And now this thing's going to do it for one energy? That's pretty good. How come it does so much? Oh, you gotta flip a coin. If Tails, this attack does no damage to the defending Pokemon. And Giovanni's Machoke does 100 damage to itself. Are you kidding me? Okay. You can see just by what the attack is named that this is going to be the riskiest card of all time. It's literally named Risky Attack. Flip a coin. If Heads, you do 60. If Tails... You do nothing, and you knock yourself out. <laughs> so, this fits every one of our criteria to an extreme. A few flip heads, this is the positive result. Things go very well for you. You do 60 damage. That's a ton. If you flip tails, you get an extreme negative. The damage you did is cancelled out, and you knock yourself out. And of course, you have no control over it because it's a coin flip. So Giovanni's Machoke, congratulations, you are the riskiest card of all time. You don't know whether or not you want to do 60 or just punch yourself right in the face and knock yourself out. So, the super power Pokemon has a super risky attack, and that'll land him here at number one on our list of riskiest cards of all time. So, thanks everybody for watching, hope you enjoyed this list. If you think there's a card that should have made the list but didn't, let me know down in the comment. Leave some feedback. And let me know if you'd like more videos like this. This is a fun list to put together. And I think it's a, a cool look at the lighter side of Pokemon. So, if you don't think Giovanni's Machoke deserves to be number one, let me know. Leave some feedback down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I have been Puka from the Top Cut. And I'll see you guys next time.